Thank you so much for joining us. Hi there. We appreciate you joining in on our Zoom meeting today. We're going to give it uh, just a, about a little, uh, a minute more to let some, a uh, couple more folks come in. I hope everybody's doing well today. Looking forward to the weekend coming up. Okay. If you are in so far, we're going to be sharing uh, a couple of links with you uh, during the presentation in our chat box. It looks like uh, they're not showing up as uh, as hyperlinks. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll ask if you can try to uh, copy and paste, but we'll also be following up after the presentation with email links um, with uh, hyperlinks directly uh, in that. So you'll be able to, to access all of the resources directly. Hi, Amanda. Thank you for joining us. I love your background. Okay. All right, I think we're looking good. We're about three minutes after our start time, so I think we'll go ahead and we'll get started here. Okay, if we're all good, let's get started then. So hello everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today for our Success in Remote Learning info session brought to you by FIU's Disability Resource Center. My name's Kim Hunter. I'm the Senior Program Coordinator for the DRC. I oversee testing accommodations and the front desk accommodation team. I'm here with my colleague, Joanna Lindsay. She's one of DRC's access consultants. She handles the freshman cohort and she serves as DRC's service animal liaison. So um, before we start, I'd like to ask everyone joining us right now uh, through Zoom, if you can go ahead, if you're able to access the link that uh, we shared through Zoom um, with the attendance sheet, if you can go ahead and get to that and sign in, I'll pull up our PowerPoint and then we will get started. So I think we're all ready to start. So again, my name is Kim Hunter and I'm here uh, today with Joanna Lindsay. We're gonna be talking about the shift to remote learning and uh, discuss ways to maximize your efficiency and utilize the resources that are available to you during this time. So I think uh, we can all agree on what a strange and unexpected semester this has turned out to be so far. When the COVID-19 pandemic came into our lives, it brought with it change, fear, and uncertainty that has impacted us all in many ways. Students are faced with a shift to, uh, from in-person classes to remote learning, and for some of you, this might be your first time navigating the online learning environment. Even for those of you that do have experience taking online classes, based on your conditions at home right now, you might be finding it difficult to participate and meet your class goals. Outside of the academic challenges, there are personal challenges that you might be experiencing as well with the transition from your regular lives to this new normal. Many of us are facing complications of being quarantined, such as finding everyday resources at the grocery store, managing childcare, and dealing with financial struggles due to layoffs. We're also managing our own fears and anxieties that come with this pandemic and the uncertainty of just not knowing when it's all gonna be over. We understand how difficult this time is for many of you, and we want you to know that we're here to support you and help you navigate these challenges. So we're gonna be starting this information session um, by sharing the resources that are available to you, along with tips and best practices for remote learning. After our presentation, we're gonna be answering questions that you've submitted to us. 
Um, so if there's anything you'd like to ask or discuss, please comment in the chat box at any time during the presentation so that we can follow up during our Q&A session. Keep in mind though, um, to maintain confidentiality, if you have any questions or concerns that have to do with your disability or your specific accommodations, we recommend that you, act, uh, that you follow up with your access consultant directly so that they can provide you additional assistance. So if all of that sounds good and if we're ready, let's go ahead and talk about success in remote learning. I want to start by reminding everyone that although FIU campuses are closed, the Disability Resource Center is going to continue to be available to work remotely with our students, faculty, and staff to provide support and facilitate accommodations. If you have any general questions or if you want to schedule an appointment, you can email us at drc at fiu.edu and we'll, we'll follow up with you as soon as possible. You're also welcome to call us and leave us a voicemail at 305-348-3532 and then allow one to two business days for a response. Student meetings are gonna be taking place remotely uh, via phone and Zoom appointments. So if you wanna schedule a meeting, just reach out to us and provide your name and Panther ID, the purpose of your appointment, and then your availability to meet with an access consultant. If you're scheduling a Zoom meeting, you're going to be receiving an email prior to your appointment with the information that you need to get started. And if you're scheduling a phone meeting, just keep in mind that on the day of your appointment, you're going to be called by an access consultant from a blocked or unknown number. So when this call comes in on the day and time of your appointment, please just make sure to answer so that the appointment can start without delay. And if we're not able to reach you by phone, we'll leave you a voicemail and then follow up by email. Students that are in need of accommodations that are not yet registered with the DRC are encouraged to contact our office to schedule a welcome appointment. And during your welcome appointment, you're going to provide documentation supporting your need for accommodations. This can be uh, medical records, a letter from your doctor or psychologist, or documentation of accommodations that you received from a previous school or university. And if you are already registered with the DRC, uh, like I said, we encourage you to reach out to your access consultant directly via email with any questions or concerns about your accommodations at this time. Your access consultant is going to be assigned based on your academic level. So Joanna Lindsay uh, sees our freshman students. Geneva Munoz takes care of our sophomores. We have Enrique Hernandez handling the junior cohort and Steven Loynaz handling seniors and graduate students. We also have Stephanie Bello at our Biscayne Bay campus and she handles all of our BBC student cases. So with the recent university changes, there have been a lot of discussions about remote accommodations for students with disabilities. We want to assure you that the DRC is here to work with you and faculty to make sure that your classes continue to be fully accessible to you during this period of remote learning. We also want to remind you, just in case you haven't done so already, that in order to activate your accommodations for this semester, you must turn in your notification of academic adjustment form. This is also known as a letter to professor or LTP. And by submitting this form, you're giving the DRC permission to notify your professors of your accommodations with our office. Now, uh, after becoming registered with the DRC, sorry, after becoming registered with the DRC, students must submit their LTP every semester in order to opt into their accommodations. So remember, if you have not turned in your LTP for this semester, your professors have not yet been notified of your enrollment with the DRC, and your accommodations have therefore not been activated for this term. You can complete the LTP by downloading it from our website, filling it out on your computer, and then emailing it to drc at fiu.edu. Remember though that accommodations cannot be applied retroactively, which is why we advise students to submit this form to us as soon as possible. Now, if you add any new classes or if your professor changes after submitting your LTP, you're going to need to complete the form again, listing your new class, section number, and the name of your professor. For those of you that already turned in your LTP for the spring semester and there have been no changes to your classes or your professors, you will not need to turn in a new form for the spring semester. Um, but if you are already registered for classes for the summer semester, you can go ahead and complete and submit your letter to professor to us now. 
So um, many students have questions about how their specific accommodations are going to be provided during this period of remote learning. As we said, the DRC has been in close communication with faculty during this transition so that we can give them the information and support that they need to implement all of your accommodations at this time. Um, that being said, if your pre professor does have any questions about uh, providing accommodations, please refer them to our office so that we can follow up and provide them with additional assistance. Now let's take a look at a few student accommodations and how they're going to be implemented in a remote setting. So testing accommodations are going to continue to be provided for all quizzes and exams that take place during FIU's remote learning period. However, please do remember that you are responsible for making the necessary preparations for your test before the day that it's scheduled. And this is going to avoid complications and unnecessary delays in receiving your accommodations on the day of your test. So for example, um, if your remote test calls for certain programs such as Lockdown Browser, Honor Lock, or ProctorU, you're going to need to prepare in advance by downloading the necessary software and then completing any system requirement checks that the program has. We encourage you to follow up with your professors so you can see what platforms they're going to be using and what steps you need to take to make sure that you are ready on the day of your final exam. For all Canvas exams, faculty and instructional designers will be extending testing times for students that have opted into any of their extended time accommodations. Um, do keep in mind, though, that there are some testing accommodations that will require you to coordinate your testing space in advance. So, for example, this could be a private testing room, minimal distraction testing room, adaptable desk, and screen magnification. We do understand uh, that it might be difficult to arrange for your testing environment to be completely distraction free. And that's why we highly encourage you to establish a schedule and clarify expectations with your family and roommates ahead of time so that you can avoid distractions to the best of your ability. And if you stay tuned, Joanna has some great tips that she'll be sharing later on how to avoid distraction during remote learning. So now um, FIU is encouraging faculty to utilize remote proctoring through Honor Lock for tests taking place during this remote learning period. Students are able to take up to two tests per class through Honor Lock at no charge for the rest of the spring semester. And with this platform, students are remotely proctored through the use of an AI to monitor students for unauthorized behavior. Keep in mind that you're only going to be watched by a live proctor only in the uh, event that the AI has detected academic dishonesty during a test session. And you don't need to be concerned that the use of your accommodations will be flagged by HonorLock's AI, because when faculty are scheduling tests through HonorLock, they're actually going to be noting certain accommodations within the system so that students are not flagged uh, while they're using their accommodations. And of course, if your professor has any questions about reporting accommodations within HonorLock, please refer them to the DRC so that we can provide additional guidance. So students with screen reading accommodations will be able to continue using programs such as Kurzweil and JAWS while navigating remote learning content. We encourage students with Kurzweil accounts to download the browser add-on for Chrome called Read the Web, which will allow you to use Kurzweil to have web content read out loud to you. Uh, if you're registered with Kurzweil and you have not yet downloaded the Chrome extension, you can see our Zoom chat box for a link for the add-on. And again, we'll be following up afterwards with a link via email. And so speaking of, let's take a moment to talk about Zoom. Um, I'm sure many, if not all of you, have had remote class sessions through Zoom by now. But uh, what you might not know is that this platform actually comes with many accessibility features to meet specific accommodation needs. Not only does Zoom provide screen reader support and keyboard accessibility, it can also offer automated transcripts, live closed captioning, and recordings for students to play back at a later date. Keep in mind though that some of these features might need to be activated by your professor and the DRC in advance. So um, if you feel like any of these specific features will benefit you, please coordinate with your access consultant and your professor for additional assistance. And lastly, we have the accommodation of alternative text format. 
And for this accommodation, we encourage students to use Census Access, which is a document conversion tool that is available to the entire FIU community. And this tool allows you to convert documents into many different formats. And this can be PDF, Microsoft Word, and even audio files. Um, we'll be including a link to this resource in our chat box, and then we'll also be following up by email as well. Uh, now, if textbooks or other materials are not available in electronic formats and need to be converted, you'll need to complete an electronic textbook request form through our DRC website prior to the start of the semester. Keep in mind with the transition to remote services uh, that textbook requests might take additional time to implement due to the limited number of staff on campus right now. So for this reason, we highly suggest students to submit their requests as soon as possible for the upcoming summer semester to allow for enough time to receive the accessible text. And now I'm going to be passing things along to Joanna Lindsay, who's going to be talking to you about tips and resources for being successful in remote learning. Hey Kim, thanks. Uh, I also wanted to uh, say that Yessi is here with us from the DRC team. She's assisting us with the chat box as well as she'll be mediating our question and answer portion. So I just wanted to mention that real quick. And also just a reminder about the attendance link, if you're able to go ahead and click on that, which is also going to be in the chat box. So like Kim said, uh, we're going through some difficult uh, times and as a result of that, we definitely want to make sure we're sharing as many resources as possible. The resources that we mention, you know, these are not all the resources that are available to all students, but these are the ones that we wanted to highlight. One of the things that we want to emphasize with offices is please make sure you reach out to an office uh, and call them. A lot of offices are available all day, but you are able to leave messages and then someone will get back to you. So I definitely want, you want to emphasize that. So, you know, um, even though we're remote, those hours, we're still maintaining those hours. So if it's 8.30 to 5, um, that's going to be consistent. So I'm going to read out a couple of the offices that we have on here and just briefly mention the phone number. You can always just go to the website and type in counseling services. Uh, and the CAPS website will come up. Uh, so that's one of the actual first resources I'm going to mention, which is our CAPS office, uh, Counseling and Psychological Services. And uh, we definitely encourage you to reach out. They are available. It's something we're going to talk about later on again in self-care. Uh, their number is 305-348-2277. So that is our Counseling and Psychological Services office. The other one that we wanted to talk about as well is our Student Health Services. Please, they're not doing any walk-in appointments. It's really, really important that if you do need to work with them, please call ahead of time because they will most likely turn you away. And so it's really, really important that you go ahead and make that call ahead of time. And you can do that by calling 305-348-2401, okay? All right, so some other resources that we have on here are the Center for Academic Success. So these are our tutoring services offices, tutoring on biology, math, science, they are available. Uh, they will be taking appointments they have availability online, but what they're asking is that you give them two options as by the time that they're able to honor your request, that first option might not be available. So definitely go ahead and check them out. It is on their website, all of their available um, times and their appointments on there. So you can just go to Center for Academic Success, uh, type that in and they'll be able to uh, help you out. The same thing with the Center for Writing. They're available as well. Uh, their appointments, usually you can make appointments with them on demand a little bit differently than the Center for Academic Success. But as we get busy and we know finals week's coming up, you might need help with papers. Keep in mind that the appointment that you may want may not be available. But typically, when you make an appointment with the Center for Writing, you're able to make that appointment um, instantaneously on their website. It's a little bit different than the Center for Academic Success schedule, okay? All right, so we want to definitely talk about our Veterans and Military Service Affairs Office. They are available uh, to talk to you at any time. You can always leave them a voice message at 305-348-2838, and you can always email them. But they do have certain Zoom office hours that are available. 
and that would be Tuesdays, 12 to 2, Thursdays, 9 to 12, and Fridays, 12 to 3. So definitely reach out to them by email. You know, there might be a possibility that that, you know, the time that they're available doesn't work for you. I'm sure they'll be able to work with your schedule. But at this point, those are the office hours that they have available at the moment. So just go ahead and give them a call and leave them a message. We also want to talk about our College Life Coaching Program. And if you guys are not familiar with what our College Life Coaching Program is, it's an opportunity to talk to someone. So if you are struggling with time management, maybe you're like, you know, I pretty much had it under control when I was, you know, in face to face, but now that I'm remote, I'm really struggling on how to manage my time. That's definitely something one of the college coaches um, can help you with. You can reach out to them by calling them at uh, 305-348-8137 or send them an email at coaching at fiu.edu, okay? All right, so now we're gonna jump into uh, some best practices for remote learning. Um, there are always tips and different things that we can add. These are just some of the things that we highlighted. So on the list, we have four things that I'm gonna go through with you guys. The first one is time management, which we actually just talked about a little bit. And so I think time management is definitely something that we all deal with, whether we're in person or we're remote. And so what we talk about is prioritizing time sensitive meetings and you probably are like, okay, Joanna, what do you consider, you know, a time sensitive meeting or task? Well, that might be a meeting with your professor, right? Um, some professors only have specific office hours, right? So you might want to prioritize that specific time in your schedule and say, I need to make sure I go to these office hours because I'll be able to get these questions answered. Uh, another thing is group meetings. Sometimes group projects are worth, you know, up to 20 to 30% of your grade. So you definitely want to make sure when you're managing your time, you're keeping those things um, as part of your schedule. And that's the next thing we're going to talk about, creating a schedule and, you know, weekly to-do list to plan ahead for uh, tests or any obstacles that come in your way. And since you are remote learning, things could be different, especially if you have kids, Maybe now you have to do um, different things in your schedule, like cooking, because, you know, a lot of places are not typically open as they would be. So your schedule is going to look a little different in when you're planning your time and how you're prioritizing your meetings and your plans. The third one we focus on is using your syllabus, which, by the way, you should be using your syllabus all the time. But uh, we definitely want you to, you know, kind of put those dates out there. Maybe you are using your class as a way to get notifications. Well, now that you don't have the class, now you have to really, um, and, and when I say you don't have the class, some people might actually have the class at the same time with the Zoom meeting, uh, like Kim kind of talked about, but other professors might just have a type of style of class where you're not necessarily meeting at that time, and they're just sharing information. So you definitely are going to have to use the syllabus, and if you're confused about dates or deadlines, which we find that things are different, like Kim mentioned, definitely email the instructor or you can email us. We are also able to like help close the loop on a lot of like instructions on how to utilize tests. And I know that Kim has been helpful in helping our professors do that. And the last one is avoiding distractions, uh, which is a very large statement because there's a lot of distractions now that some of us are at home. But one of the things we, we recommend is coordinating your schedule with your family and your partners and just kind of considering the setup that you have. So you know, you might have a small space and maybe that was a storage. I personally know um, my desk was a place where I used to uh, put papers. And so I had to make sure I decluttered it. That's a word that we use. You know, make sure you have whatever you need for optimal performance. Sometimes listening to music might be helpful. Uh, make sure you have your water handy if you are in a meeting or a class and that way you don't have to get up and don't have to miss anything. Kim mentioned something that's really great. A lot of sessions are now recorded. So that, that's really helpful. So if you do have to leave the room for any reason, um, that's something that will be available to you at some point. So just, just try to uh, you know, do that as much as you can. All right, so Zoom tips and etiquette. And uh, this is something that uh, we've been doing in this meeting. So when Kim's talking, I kind of mute myself so that I you know, don't say anything or make any background noise. Um, so that's one of the things we talk about here is muting your microphone. 
whenever you aren't speaking and avoid talking over others, which is something I'm working through. Um, and the other thing is trying to join the minute early, join the meeting early, sorry. And I think that's something that we just advise for technical issues or so you can kind of play with your computer, how the screen looks. There's many different things in Zoom that you can do. So if you want to see your speaker space or you want to minimize things, so that's that will give you a couple extra minutes to go ahead and do that. And then we also talk about, you know, eliminating uh, distractions by using virtual backgrounds. You've seen uh, the ones that uh, Kim had before. Uh, I have one as well. And I think Amanda has her virtual background up as well earlier. So I definitely think we're going to be sharing those uh, virtual backgrounds. Yes, he's going to help us by sharing that link. Um, and we're going to be providing it in an email later uh, for Corey's Corner, which we'll be talking more about with you later at another time. So definitely those are some examples that you can utilize the virtual backgrounds. And obviously you can use other ones. Uh, try to think of what's going to be useful when you're doing these and also try to be professional when you're in your classroom setting. So the last one we're going to talk about is how you can access Zoom meetings from any device. Uh, I uh, learned how to do that myself through the day. I, I did a Zoom meeting through my cell phone and it, um, it wasn't, it was pretty interesting. And I think the difference is you can't really see everybody's face because um, you're limited in what you can see, but it does work. So if you are in a position where you're somewhere and you can't, you know, get to a computer, you can definitely access a Zoom meeting from your iPad or from your phone. Um, you know, just be mindful of the meetings. You can also mute it. Um, I've been in some meetings where people have not muted their microphones and you can hear all the background noise. So just consider those things as one of the Zoom tips that we want to share with you guys, okay? All right, so now we're gonna talk about technology and other resources. So one of the big things that we're finding now is it's all about leveraging your available technology. What does that mean? So if there's an old monitor around or some type of, you know, keyboard setup that you didn't think of using before, definitely consider using it when you're working remotely because you can take an old monitor and what you can do is connect it to your laptop if you have an HDMI device or another type of input device. And you could create um, what we call um, dual monitors, kind of. So your laptop might be the first screen and then the monitor would be the second screen. So definitely take advantage of any of those tools that are available. Another thing that we wanted to mention are tablet keyboards. A lot of us are working remotely. Like I mentioned, um, whether you're using your cell phone or because uh, a lot of people are also using Zoom now for, you know, not just for classroom meetings, but also for social events. So definitely um, tablet keyboards are something that we suggest. And also um, Bluetooth headsets. We're not going to be very prescriptive about what we recommend. And one of the reasons why is, you know, I have a, you know, a Bluetooth headset and, it, you know, I got it from TJ Maxx. It works. Now, it's not going to work for, you know, six or seven hours, but, you know, you might not have a class or a meeting for six or seven hours. So definitely, um, when you're thinking about um, different type of devices, you can just purchase. Uh, and one of the things we're going to suggest is if you do purchase a device, just keep your receipt. Uh, double check the warranty so that if for some reason you don't like it. Um, I'm the type of person where I'll, you know, I've returned many devices because of something random that I didn't like. And so the really important thing is if you don't have your receipt, uh, you may, may not get full credit. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're thinking about buying devices. Uh, some other things that we want to share with you is just consider the cost. You know, like I said, if you're not going to be using this Bluetooth headset, um, you know, for like eight hours, you may want to just think about getting something low cost and not something very expensive. If you're thinking about buying a monitor, or uh, some other type of device, think about the weight of the monitor, who's gonna help you put the monitor up, the size, and the usability of it. Is it gonna be something that's gonna fit in your space? You definitely wanna be careful about um, the type of products you're buying. And obviously always think about the warranties and the return policies. Uh, we're gonna also mention disinfect your products, right? Uh, this is something that I think we wouldn't have previously mentioned, but as a result of this COVID-19 crisis, definitely think about disinfecting your new products and we suggest alcohol wipes, okay? So obviously you can use something else, but this is what we would suggest because that's what technology people use when they're um, sanitizing devices. And lastly, we're gonna tell you to consider using your FIU resources. I was working with a student and 
Um, he didn't realize that he could get, you know, Microsoft Word and, and Excel for free. And so definitely a lot of people are so used to using uh, their resources on campus that they don't realize that there's free resources available um, by accessing your email. And yes, he's going to be providing that information in the chat for you to go and check it out. And then like Kim said, we'll be providing it uh, later on. All right, so the next one we're going to talk about is self-care while social distancing. So definitely there's a lot of new changes. And so maintaining a, a daily self-routine is something that uh, has come up in terms of you being at home. And we definitely want to encourage you to keep doing that. So uh, part of that is going to be washing your hands regularly as we try to, you know, make sure you're staying healthy and safe. And other things like combing your hair, brushing your teeth. Um, and then part of that self-care routine, we're always going to emphasize, of course, exercising regularly and maintaining a healthy diet. And we also want you to be realistic about what that looks like, because I do think there are times when you may not be able to work out every single day. That's not going to be realistic. So if you can work out twice a week, um, I myself, it's I'm not a big fan of walking outside. So, you know, a lot of people that may be something they do. So you don't have to follow the trend necessarily. You can find your own ways to connect self-care. And that's why we talk about downloading apps. There are lots of free apps that are available or just using YouTube. YouTube is a great resource. They have lots of videos on there for um, exercises. Type in any type of exercise that you would like to do and pretty much um, it comes up and with different, many different formats. Um, and so that's one of the things that you can do. And so practicing meditation and deep breathing exercises, you know, stretching, uh, taking walks, all of those things are big things that we want to definitely emphasize because it is important to take, they're recommending taking mini breaks when you're disconnecting while remote learning. And they also say, and this was in one of our, our coronavirus updates, I think it was number 25, to try not to read too much news coverage. So definitely take mini breaks. When you're thinking about these breaks, definitely think about things like meditation, and deep breathing exercises, stretching or just simply walking in place, whatever works for where you are. So in addition to your, you know, daily self-care routine, we also want to encourage you to schedule remote counseling sessions. Uh, it may not be something that you need to do, you know, every week, but definitely since the counseling service is available and the service is there, take advantage of it. And also you can reach out to other providers as well outside of FIU. They're available and they are providing remote counseling services. In addition to those resources, we're definitely saying talk to your friends, attend virtual events. We know that there's virtual museum visits that you can take. Um, there's library services that are available. I'm taking advantage of that myself. Um, so definitely look into like those free resources that you can take advantage of um, when you're thinking about reaching out. If, you're, if you feel your circle is limited, there are definitely ways to disconnect even while you're remote learning. And the last thing we just kind of want to talk about is we want to encourage you guys to practice empathy and be mindful of others. You know, even if you have not, you know, been very uh, impacted by COVID-19 in some way with the loss of someone, you're impacted in some way or some level. And so I just think to be careful what you say, be careful what you put out there in social media, because this is a very sensitive time for a lot of individuals. So I think that's really important that we that we're mindful of what we're saying and what we do when we think about how to reach out to other individuals. All right, that's it. Now we'll start with our question and answer portion. Hi, everyone. Um, we're actually gonna get started with a few questions that we got off of Instagram. So the first question that we have is, what conditions should be present in the ideal learning environment? All right, so I'm going to take that one, Yessie. Thank you. Uh, so definitely, there are some conditions that are very conducive to, you know, having a learning environment, which are having a decluttered space, which means your desk would be clear, right? Um, and you would have very little noise. Uh, and if you are in an environment where you're, you have a big family, one way to reduce that noise is having a Bluetooth headset, um, thinking about using your cell phone to produce a white noise machine. We, you can buy a white noise machine, but let's just say you're limited in your resources. These are just things that you can do 
So definitely decluttering your space and thinking about ways to reduce the noise around you and also basically setting yourself up like we talked about before. So if you're the type of person who, you know, likes to drink water or needs to have your box of tissues, I think that surrounding yourself with those type of things. I've often found one thing that's helpful to me is um, I have my charging devices close to me because I don't know if you guys can relate, but sometimes your cell phone um, like dies. So what I end up doing is I have kind of like my chargers connected to, um, to my, you know, my laptop. So that way I, you know, when I'm done getting up from the desk, I don't feel like, oh my God, my, my phone is on 20%. So definitely those are some tips that could help you in getting your space set up. And also you have to think about what works for you. And we were talking about this earlier. It could be that maybe you work better with low lighting. I'm the type of person that prefers low light. And Kim might want to have more light in the room. So definitely we have different personalities. So, you know, if you're the type of person who's good with low light, then, you know, you can adjust that, uh, whether turning the lamp off that's on your desk and just using the light from outside or, in Kim's case, she might have her lamp on her desk on. So definitely think about your learning style, but also think about those other things like ambient light, whatever those things are that impact you and help you to work more effectively. Thank you, Joanna. Those were very good tips. We have another question and it reads, do I need to complete an exam proctor form for my final exam? Good question. Go ahead and take that one. That is a good question. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for remembering the exam proctor form. Usually we do need those to facilitate testing accommodations, but during the remote learning period, we won't be needing them since they are only required in order for us to facilitate in-person uh, testing sessions through the DRC or through the University Testing Center. And during remote learning, the, your professors are able to facilitate your accommodations remotely. Um, if you do have any concerns about receiving your testing accommodations during your final exam or any exams that take place during remote learning, please do uh, follow up with me directly so that uh, I can make sure to uh, provide assistance. Uh, again, I'm Kim Hunter, I'm the testing coordinator and I can be reached by email at khunter, K-H-U-N-T-E-R at F-I-U dot E-D-U. So uh, just to reiterate, no, you will not need an exam proctor form for your final exam for this semester. Thank you, Kim. Our next online question is, is remote learning extended to the fall semester? So at this time, uh, the information that we have from the university is that remote learning exists for summer A and the summer C terms. So definitely for summer A, we will be starting with remote learning and all the way to summer C. At this time, the university is waiting to tell us if they're going to be remote learning for summer B session, which would be starting on June 22nd. So what we're definitely doing is we're encouraging you to please pay attention to those updates from the emails that you're receiving. I can tell some students are paying attention to the email updates and some of you, some of the students are not. Those updates are really important to us. I've been saving all of them. Um, so please just look at those updates because that is what, that's how we're getting updated about the changes that are going on in the university. And I just want to also point out, in addition to that, advisors are available. They are available to answer questions, to do advising appointments as well. It might get a little bit busy, just like it would in in-person, but they are available uh, to reach out and help students as well. All right. We have another, okay, it says, I have an honor lock exam coming up. What do I do if I get distracted by being watched during my test? Um, I'll answer that. So thank you for your question. Uh, I'm gonna refer back to our, our section that we talked about before about honor lock. What a lot of students might not realize is that with honor lock's use of an AI, you're actually not being monitored or watched by a live person. Uh, the, the default is that your testing session will be monitored uh, through an AI and the AI will be monitoring for any unauthorized behavior. The only time that you're going to be linked to uh, 
a live person is in the event that there's an issue with your test, uh, if an AI does detect that there is any unauthorized behavior that is happening, such as if you're not allowed notes and it picks up that you're using notes, if um, you, it hears that you're talking to someone um, off screen, then it, it might flag you for those things. But um, just as a reminder, like I said before, that students that have specific testing accommodations, they're all going to be uh, flagged within the honor lock system. So if your accommodations um, do require you to use outside resources, then that will be flagged within the honor lock system and you will not be identified as cheating while you're uh, using those resources. But again, um, it you for the most part will not be monitored by a live person and we want to uh, emphasize that actually with honor lock testing this is probably going to be the least invasive uh, remote proctoring option that you have um, even the the least invasive proctoring option that you have because even for for students that uh, do come into the DRC and the University Testing Center to take their tests those tests as well are being monitored at all times by um, our proctors remotely uh, to via our, our surveillance cameras to make sure that students aren't accessing any materials that they're not able to access, um, which is different than honor lock because honor lock automatically, um, unless there are any issues, is going to be uh, monitored via the AI. So um, I hope that answers your question uh, since uh, you will likely not be experiencing uh, live monitoring. So you hopefully will not be receiving uh, or will be experiencing any distractions, but reach out to us if you do have any additional concerns. Wonderful. And we have one more question from Instagram before we get to the participant questions. I already see one in the chat there. Um, the last question is what financial resources are available for students? I mean, if you guys want, I could probably talk a little bit about this. Um, sure. <laughs> so the DRC, as many of you might be aware, if you're not, then I guess I'll talk a little bit more about that. We have the Johnson Scholarship, which is our major scholarship that's funded by the Board of Governors that we give to our students with disabilities. Um, at the moment, the application process is going on, and we just extended it to May 1st due to everything that's been going on and we're being very flexible about receiving the applications online. It is available on our website, um, but you can also send an email out to either the DRC email or myself. I'll type it in the chat box. Um, I am the scholarship coordinator for the DRC and we could give you more information on how to apply for that scholarship. It will fund the fall and spring semester of the upcoming academic year. So that will be a little bit helpful. Um, otherwise, we always suggest that you check out fiu.academicworks.com. It has all of the available university scholarships. So that tends to be a pretty good source of funding for students that may apply for these different kinds of scholarship opportunities. Um, and again, the financial aid website is a very good resource as to any other kind of uh, grants or maybe loans and stuff that you may have available to you at that time. Yes. Okay, I hope that answers that question. Um, we have a question from the chat. And by the way, if someone is for some reason unable to use the chat feature, just go ahead and maybe use like a reaction and we'll try to call on you for a question, okay? Um, we have a question from Wendy on the chat and it says, once we return to campus, is there an opportunity to try out or experience the accessibility software? I would love to learn more about it. So for sure, absolutely. Um, we definitely encourage you to follow up with us so that we can arrange for you to come into the office and uh, so you can uh, test out some of the adaptable software. Our adaptive, uh, adaptive technology specialist, his name is Reynaldo, and uh, what you can do is when we are back on campus, you can just reach out to us, you can come to our office, you can give us a call, send us an email, and we can schedule an appointment with him so that he can give you a little bit more information and resources. So yes, absolutely. Um, also, I'll add in that um, we have a signature event that we're working on. Um, we've already done it once before. It's the Breaking Barriers Escape Room. And that's actually a really great opportunity to experience all of the accessibility software that we have to offer. We try to expose um, other students to this, to bring awareness to um, these uh, technologies that our students use at the DRC. 
So whenever we get back to campus, hopefully we'll try to put another one together. We were unfortunately able to do the one this April uh, that we have put together for Diversity Week, but that's also a really good way to kind of get to um, experience and play around with um, all of that technology. So we'll keep you posted on when we have one of those events coming up. Do we have any other questions from the floor? So. Okay, so if we have no more questions, we will go ahead and wrap up then. So thank you, Yessi, and thank you again, all of you, for submitting your questions. Um, we'll be closing the session with some deep breathing and guided meditation. And as Joanna mentioned, this is a great way to reduce stress, focus the mind, and relax the body. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here okay so first i'm going to ask you to come to a comfortable position in your chair make sure that your back is straight and that your body is as relaxed as possible take a moment to ground yourself in the space that you're in by closing your eyes Take notice of any physical sensations, such as the feel of your chair or your feet as you're planted firmly to the ground. Now, focus on your breath. And with each breath, feel your stomach rise and fall. Join me in taking a deep breath in through your nose and exhaling slowly out through your mouth. More deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. Take another deep breath, and while you exhale, release the tension in your muscles and allow your body to relax. As you're breathing, you might notice your mind beginning to wander. If this happens, simply guide your attention gently back to your breath. Give yourself permission to be at peace in this moment. Allow yourself to take the time that you need to focus on yourself and your well being. Continue to breathe deeply, and as you exhale, let go all the stress that you've been holding on to. Breathe deeply and relax your whole body. Release the tension behind your eyes and unclench your jaw. Feel the tension leave your neck 
and your shoulders. Relax your arms, your hands, and your fingers. Relax your waist, your leg muscles, Relax your ankles and your feet. Your breathing is slow and peaceful. Feel the calmness in your breath and feel at ease and steady. Now, feel the awareness of your body. Slowly, begin to make small movements. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. Okay, and there you have it, everybody. I hope we're all feeling a little bit better and that it maybe eased your stress if only for just a little bit. Remember that um, mindfulness and meditation are great tools that we strongly encourage you to use as part of your self-care routine. This can be a really great way to help reduce stress, enhance your mood, improve sleep, and focus your mind. You can either do this on your own or you can search online where you can find lots of free videos for guided meditation and mindful breathing. Before we end the session, uh, I just wanted to mention that although we know how difficult these times have been for many of you and how they continue to be very difficult, every day the DRC team is inspired by the resiliency of our students and your dedication to face these goals and challenges and meet your academic goals. Although uh, we'll certainly uh, be facing additional challenges during these next few weeks and months, um, please just remember that the DRC is here to support you and connect you with the, resource, the resources that are available to you during this time. Uh, please stay connected with us uh, by following us on social media through Facebook and Instagram using the handle FIUDRC. And remember all of the links and the resources that we talked about today, uh, they're all available to you on our website, which is drc.fiu.edu, along with frequently asked questions and additional DRC information. So please reach out, uh, let us know if you have any other questions or if there's anything we can do to provide assistance. So again, that's, that's it. We're gonna bring this meeting to a close. Thank you again, everybody. Uh, Thank you very much, yes. Stay safe and reach out to us. Let us know if there's anything that we can do to assist, okay? Bye guys, take care. Thanks a lot.